Warning, this adventure is super dangerous. Everyone appearing in this video is a trained professional. We don't recommend doing this adventure unless you have the proper experience and equipment. Attempt this at your own risk. I'm not exactly sure how we came across the Moapa Peak Trail near the Valley of Fire in Nevada, but this hike has been on our radar for a couple of years now. Due to its location and difficulty, we only had a small window of time each year to have the perfect weather to attempt it. After two years, we finally found the perfect day and the perfect crew to attempt this wild hike. The adventure begins before you even reach the trailhead. You will be navigating eight miles of dirt roads. High clearance is highly recommended, but Aaron's RAV4 made it through with no problems. Soon we began to get views of Moapa Peak as it taunted us from across the desert. This hike comes in with an overall distance of 7 miles with an elevation gain of 3,280 feet. We were kind of surprised to see another car at the trailhead when we pulled up. At least we weren't going to be the only crazy people on the mountain that day. This hike is broken down into three sections. First you'll be making your way up the wash, then you'll be scrambling along the ridge line, and finally you'll get to experience the Moapa Knife Edge Ridge. If you have a fear of heights or balance issues, I hate to say it, but this is not the hike for you. And one other piece of advice is that you need to download an offline map ahead of time. There is no signal out here, and we found that the All Trails map for this hike was really helpful when it came to navigating this difficult route. One last recommendation is bringing an SOS beacon. As you'll see, there are plenty of ways to hurt yourself on this hike, and you need to be able to get help if you find yourself in trouble. The hike up the wash starts off nice and simple, and it can easily lull you into a false sense of security. But soon you're going to be starting off with some small rock climbs. These shouldn't be too challenging for you, but if they are, just know that it gets a whole lot harder from here on out. The rock out here is extremely grippy, so when you mix that with shoes like our La Sportivas, you should be getting a ton of traction. As we worked our way further up the wash, we spotted our first rock current. It was quite subtle, but at least we knew we were on the right trail. After climbing a few more boulders, we came to a fork. Going right would have headed into a slot canyon that dead ended and going left was going to take us up this very steep hill. From here on out the fun and games are pretty much over and you're going to be climbing all the way to the top. This is also where the risk starts to kick in because there are several parts where you're on narrow trails with huge drop offs on the sides. As if the climbing wasn't challenging enough, you're going to have to watch out for a lot of obstacles like loose rocks, yucca, and several different type of cacti. This includes barrow cactus, prickly pear, claret cup, and strawberry hedgehog. Even though we did our best to avoid it, everyone in our group ended up getting poked at one time or another over the course of the hike. I think that V got the worst of it though because she ended up grabbing onto a dead cactus that blended into the rocks. Bringing a first aid kit or at least some tweezers with you would probably be a good idea. We have now reached the top of the climb out of the wash and after a small celebration, we turned right and continued on. This is yet another great point to take a pause and see where you are within your comfort level because after this, it gets even more difficult. The hike got significantly steeper as we climbed our way up a series of ledges. As we continued our way up, we came to one of the more prominent rock currents of the trail. One of the good things about the climbs on this portion of the hike is that not only as I mentioned before, the rock is very grippy, but there also seem to be plenty of hand and footholds. It is always a great idea to check your handholds though before you put your full body weight on them. We are pretty dang high up at this point and having a handhold blow out on you could result in a huge fall. Thank you. 
Even though you've been climbing for what feels like an eternity at this point, the steepest part with the most elevation gain comes at the last third of this hike. One of the other things that make this climb so intense is just how flat the surrounding area is. Since there are open plains pretty much all the way out to the horizon, it makes you feel like you're hanging off the side of Mount Everest. V and I had both been doing some elevation training in preparation for this trip, but I can say that not much can prepare you for Moapa. Eventually you will have climbed all the way up to the base of the Knife Edge Ridge. The only challenge is we need to access the ridge from the opposite side of the mountain, so the trail will be turning right and traversing along the base of the ridge. The good thing is that you will be getting a bit of a break from the intense angle of the climb. The bad side is that the trail is extremely narrow with a huge drop off, so you need to watch your step. We had one final push to make it to the part that we had all been waiting for, which is that knife edged ridge. And here it is with Terry standing on top of it. Luckily he had scouted out the easier way up and rather than going straight up the front of it, we curved off to the right. You'll be dropping down just a little bit before you see a nice easy way up to the ridge line. It's at this point where the spiciness level will be going all the way up to ghost pepper and you need to be very careful and deliberate with your movements. From the videos that we had seen, I wasn't sure if the ridgeline just looked narrow because of GoPro distortion or other factors, but calling this a knife edge ridgeline is very accurate because it is only about a foot wide in certain places. We really lucked out with the weather. There were windstorms in the area the day before and there is no way we would attempt the ridge with those conditions. Even though the ridge line is only about 200 yards long, it takes a while to get across. The ridge line might not be considered difficult to cross from a technical standpoint, but the exposure will without a doubt test you mentally. Since this is not a very popular route because not a lot of people are crazy enough to do this, one of the things you definitely need to be on the lookout for are those loose rocks. The last thing that you want to have happen is to grab onto something or step on something and have it go shooting out from under you up here. On the bright side, it appears that even the pokey cactus were too afraid to be up here, so at least we got a break from them. Some parts of the ridgeline are definitely more intimidating than others, and there were a couple of times where we were questioning our life choices, but at the end of the day, this is the kind of stuff that we live for. Eventually, we heard some cheers as our own personal mountain goats, Aaron and Terry, reached the peak first. Luckily, once you reach the top, you'll find yourself at a nice, wide, flat area. This will give you a nice little bit of a breather before you make the way back down, which I will say is a little bit more terrifying than the way up. One interesting fact about the top is that supposedly on a clear day, you can see Utah, California, Nevada, and Arizona. But be careful when you're enjoying the view because there are also dinosaurs up here. Once everyone was at the top, we signed the logbook, had a little dance party, and then we got started on our way back down. We had began the trail at around 9.30, but we wish that we would have gotten a bit of an earlier start. Just a bit of a warning, the way down is quite a bit trickier and it's probably going to take you longer than the climb up. Down climbing is usually a bit trickier, not only physically but mentally as well because you are going to be looking down that drop the entire way. 
Luckily, I feel like we got some practice in last year when we climbed three peaks on Oahu. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to click in the upper corner because that one was pretty awesome. I'm not sure if it's because we weren't stopping to take as many pictures or if we were just rushing a little bit more to get back to the car before dark, but we made pretty good time on our way back across the ridge line. There was one last tricky spot where you climb up onto this rock that reminded us of a saddle. Of course, An couldn't help but show off his pony riding skills and he is available for parties. Soon we were back at the end of the ridge line and you are going to once again go off the side of it rather than going straight down. That is unless you're Aaron and Terry because they went straight off the edge. At this point the crux of the hike is now behind you but you are nowhere near out of danger just yet. Even though the rest of the hike has nowhere near the exposure of the ridge line. The loose rocks will have almost the entire way down feeling like one big jagged slip and slide. But this is not the fun kind because all of these rocks are very jagged and sharp. And now that we are officially back into the cactus capital of the world, there's a good chance that if you slip, you're going to go flying right into one of them. Not one member of our group escaped this hike unscathed. Everyone left with a combination of bruises, scrapes, and cuts. Although I've kind of grown to love my scars that I got on Moapa because it's almost like a souvenir. If after watching this video you still want to do this hike and you want to minimize the damage, I highly recommend wearing pants and gloves. Just know that you still won't be invincible though, somehow Terry managed to get scraped up through his pant legs. But it probably minimized the damage just a little bit. While the way up Moapa Peak is a insane cardiovascular workout, it's the way down that is going to take a huge toll on your body. I think that we all lost count of how many times we slipped and either caught ourselves or fell all the way down. I think we were all really lucky that no one got really injured, but I think that this is one of those rare cases where no matter how good and grippy your shoes are, you are going to be slipping and sliding on the way down. The hike out was fairly self-explanatory. We only got turned around once, but it didn't take long for us to realize our mistake and correct it. The only real waypoint that you need to be watching out for is that left turn right here, which takes place at the top of that first climb. I will be very honest, at this point in the hike, we were exhausted. Everyone in our group had fallen on our butts about 15 to 20 times. And we were all pretty much over it and ready to be back in the car. The good thing about this point in the hike is that after one more really steep hill that seemed easier to slide down, things were going to let up a little bit. We are now back in the wash and on flatter ground. There are still going to be several down climbs. But the most dangerous parts of this hike are now in the rear view mirror. I will say though that this wash seems way longer on the way out than it does on the way in. We did end up lucking out though because Terry and Aaron are incredibly fast hikers and Terry ended up going and getting Butternut the Adventure Jeep and bringing her up the trail to pick us up. We would like to send a huge thank you out to Envoy, Terry, Aaron and Charlene for coming out to take on this monster with us. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because that really helps the channel out. If you have suggestions for future videos, please let us know in the comments below. And for all the information about this hike as well as other awesome Nevada adventures, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.